Welcome back to episode three of the Disney College Program miniseries, part of the Life at Disney podcast. That's right, we are back and we are so excited. We have a fun episode today. Who are we talking to? Well, first we're gonna chat with Edwin, who is an aspiring animator and is living in Florida for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you're gonna hear from Diamond, who currently works merchandise at Disney Springs. That's right, so grab some popcorn. Grab a seat. And let's have some fun. What's going on, everyone? We are back with another episode of Your Favorite Podcast. Today, you're gonna hear from two incredible participants who are living their very best college program lives. And we're starting with a guy all the way from New York. He's an aspiring animator. He's here living his life on his own for the very first time, but he's loving the experience. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Edwin. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm so excited to have you here. We had a chance to meet probably about a few weeks ago yeah. in a very fun way because you had like all these cool designs <laughs> and like makeup on your face. It was yeah. amazing. It was really, really cool. First, how are you? I'm good. Feeling a little hot, but <laughs> overall, really great. Yeah. yeah, it's like literally hundreds of degrees outside. Yes, it's crazy. <laughs> so talk to me about your college program experience. How's it been so far? Um, and how's the process been of going from New York to Florida? It was a really crazy process. I had to leave home, I have to leave family, friends, but um, overall it's been really great and rewarding. I've made a lot of friends since starting my program here. I've been able to become more independent. It feels like a dream almost, being able to just work for such an amazing company that I've always wanted to work for. Tell us about your role and your location. I work at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge as a quick service over at Mara. It's really awesome, honestly, because we have a big savanna outlook with a bunch of animals. What was it that initially made you want to apply to the college program? Uh, it was mainly my mom. She was the one that encouraged me um, and discovered the Disney College program because I did not know where I was going to go after my two years in community college. So she was like, you should do it. You know, it'll be a lot of fun for you. It's a great opportunity for you to really reach out because you want to work for Disney. So when you got here, you're, you're experiencing everything. Do you feel like the, the decision was worth it to do it? It was definitely. I've grown a lot as a person individually, like even like my friends back at home and my mom has even noticed that I've grown so much. And overall, I would say I have become more confident in the person that I've grown up to be. That's awesome, that's incredible. So tell us the story of when you found out you were accepted to the Disney College program and how it made you feel. So I was in college, I was in my um, art class and I looked at my phone because I got a notification and it said, you know, congratulations, you've been like accepted to the Disney College program. I was so shocked, and but I was so overcome with a lot of like joy and happiness. And I immediately went to call my mom because she was the one that encouraged me to even apply for it in the first place. And I was like, mom, I got accepted to the Disney College program. And she's like, oh my God, what? I'm like, yes, it happened. Like, I got accepted. And she's like, you're gonna be able to go to Disney. You're gonna be able to like pursue and like grow from this. And she told me like, you know, when I go there to just put my best foot forward, work really hard, and talk to people, try to see how I can get into animation, you know? Overall, it's been really, really amazing, and it's honestly felt like a roller coaster because as soon as I got that acceptance letter, I started packing my bags, and next thing I knew, I was on the airplane on my way to Florida. <laughs> so having your mom encourage you to apply for the program, when you're giving her these updates and sharing you know, your experience with her, what is it like to hear her reaction and to, to see all of these things happening at once? It's amazing. I feel like I've made my mom really proud, but I still want to like go for more. I want to not let anything hold me back, and I want to be able to one day be able to tell my mom like I was able to finally pursue my like dream career. I get so emotional over it because I just love my mom so much. I adore her. She is the reason why I'm here, and she's the reason why I see a much more um, brighter future for myself. Well, I'm sure mom's listening to this episode <laughs> and she's so excited for you and there's a lot more to come too. So of course we know that your parents were so excited for you to begin this journey, but there are also things that parents worry about. So what were some of those things? It was mainly like, you know, where are you gonna do your grocery shopping? Or how are you gonna do your laundry? Like, where are you gonna go? Things like little reminders, like, oh my God, remember to wake up early. She'd wake me, like, call me really early in the morning for like traditions as well. Like she'd spam call me and be like, you have to be ready for this. Like time management, because I was not really good at time management back in New York at all. But since being here, it's like, I've, I've grown a lot more responsible 
and I've grown to be more like of a um, person that thinks ahead. Since coming here, she's been a much more like relieved and not so worried as much because you know I told her like, "Mom, it's okay. We have like a lot of options here and opportunities. We have um, we have places we can go to for our grocery shopping. We I have like a laundry machine in my room, which is really great, and um, she feels more at ease now that I've." you know, sort of like settled in and learned to be more responsible. And I'm sure it's different, right? Because now she's able to see it. Yeah. You know, it's it's a different thing when you're trying to figure it out on the other side of it. But now that you're here and you're, you're giving her those updates and details, um, like you said, she feels a lot more comfortable. And also much more happier because she sees me in a much more like happier um, state of mind. And overall, she sees me living out my dream. And every time I get uh, take photos or with characters and such, or there are like little updates that are happening at um, the parks, I'm just like, Mom, look, this is going to happen. Like, you should come, you should hang out. What character do you want Mom to meet? Um, I want her to meet Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I tease my mom about it all the time, because she always like nags me at being my sister all the time. She's like, I'm like Cinderella. I'm always having to, having to clean up app after you do all the time. Sort of like a little joke that we have with each other. So as you look at your college program experience, what's one of your biggest takeaways or your favorite memories from the program? It's been making friends, feeling like I now have a social circle of really amazing people from like all over the world who have supported me and been such great friends. You talked about coming into this experience for your internship and, and finding ways to break out of your shell and to become a little bit more social. Um, what was that process like? And I mean, is it still an ongoing situation? I am in this area where I have to speak for myself, stand out and let my voice be heard. So I do try to push myself to go out of my shell as much as I possibly can. Whether it's like by the way that I look or um, the way I choose to like interact with people who are new. I also am a fellow introvert. Mm -hmm. I am someone who, when I you know get around a lot of people, it it, it can kind of take a toll a little bit. Yeah. But um, I find ways, like you said, to to interact with others. So, what is something that you would recommend to other participants who are coming and feeling introverted but want to break out of that show? I would say just don't hold back. Um, at first, when you do get here, it'll be a bit nerve-wracking, you're in a new place, you don't know anybody, but just reach out to people, try to find things you guys have in common with each other, see if maybe you guys work on the same location, same role, things like that. Okay, so you talked about coming here, um, living on your own for the very first time, and you're in this situation where you're grocery shopping, you're having to figure out your own schedule. What is all of that like, uh, being an adult for the first time on your own? It's crazy, I came here not really knowing what to expect or how it was all going to work out for me because I don't drive. So it's been a bit difficult um, trying to adjust, but I've become more responsible from the experience. I've learned to manage my time more better, learning to just remind myself like to do the simple things like clean the house, make sure to do your bed, don't forget to do laundry this week, you're getting low on groceries, go do some grocery shopping, things of that sort. So it's definitely taught me like how to be more of an adult. And as someone who doesn't drive, so you must utilize the transportation here at Flamingo yeah. Crossing Village a lot. Mm -hmm. What's that like? Um, it's honestly pretty convenient since it'll take me to where you gotta go and it'll take me right back. So it's, it's nice. It's almost like New York, honestly, because we take trains for everything. So trains and subways. So. Were you nervous to kind of come out and live on your own? Yeah. Uh, it's difficult because I honestly lived in a small um, housing area with my family, so I never expected I'd ever really get my independence this early. I sort of expected it to happen like after I got my bachelor's in the city, but coming here, like I've gotten the chance to have my own like space to just grow and be myself. What's the best part about living on your own? Uh, my independence, honestly, is like the greatest thing ever. I get my own little room to just, again, being myself, I get to really express my creativity and not let anything hold me back. And then on the opposite side of that, what are some of the more challenging things that you've had to adjust to? Uh, it's been hard trying to manage, I guess, um, certain responsibilities. Like simple things like laundry, all the stuff, you know, I'd get reminded of a lot by my parents. You talked about your connection to your parents as well. Being away from them, do you have that time to, to chat and to just get advice from them? Uh, I try to 
consistently call my mom after work every shift and she'll ask me how I'm doing, how everything's going, and um, I usually just ask her about work, my little sister, my dad, mostly my dog. I'm far away from my dog, so I miss her very much. So one of the perks, of course, of the college program experience is that you get these special passes that you're able to use for friends and family to bring them into the parks. What is that like during this internship experience to be able to bring in friends and family into this amazing world that we live in? It's amazing. I get to give back to my family and bring them to this amazing place where we can make more magical memories together. And it's also very rewarding because, you know, you do get to do this program and gain a lot of things from it, but you also do get to share amazing memories with the family. So having been here for a while and hearing about and seeing all these different things across property, is there something that your parents haven't tried yet, a restaurant, a park, um, an area of property that they haven't been to that you would want them to check out? So my mom and my sister fly in today to come spend um, a couple days with me here. And we're both tomorrow going to experience Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party for the first time, which is really exciting. We were talking earlier, I know you're a big fan of Tron Light Cycle Run. Is that also something that you wanted them to? Oh yeah, my mom definitely wants to experience the ride. She um, hasn't been able to experience it last time she came in March because it opened like a couple weeks, I think a month after. Um, so she's really looking forward to doing that tomorrow as well. So outside of your work schedule, how often are you able to go into these parks? Uh, anytime that I technically want to, where it's like when I first started my program, I would go before work pretty early. I just got up and I was like, you know, I really want to go to Animal Kingdom and it's really close to work. So why don't I just go to Animal Kingdom and then head right to work right after? Do you often have those like spontaneous moments where you just wake up? Like, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling like going to a park today. Yeah. Is, is that... Oh, all the time. Like, if I have <laughs> um, an outfit I really want to wear or I have an idea in my head of a look that I want to make or I see, hey, you know, it's like 12 o'clock. I have like three hours to make it to Festival of Fantasy and Magic Kingdom. I'm like, okay, well, I'll make a reservation for it and just head right to that. We always talk about things being uniquely Disney and experiences that you can only have here while on your internship. What are some of those things that if you were back in New York, you wouldn't have been able to experience? I wouldn't have been able to experience going out as much, honestly, because this working here um, has definitely brought me out of my shell a lot more. I socialize more, I go out more, and it's overall pushed me to be a better version of myself than what I was previously. Yeah. So it's definitely a big um, opportunity to grow. So what are some of the things that you do to take care of yourself? I go to the parks by myself to grow more comfortable with just being with myself. I go mainly for character meet and greets and the parades. My favorite parade um, is going to be the Disney's Festival of Fantasy Parade over at um, Magic Kingdom. So from an animation perspective, what is your favorite either animated film or TV show? Um, it's definitely going to be Cinderella so far. I've grown really attached to the character since coming here. So I really, my favorite scene overall would be like the whole dress transformation, the way the effects are done. And little things like that, like special effects, the way um, people just are able to convey that sort of like magic feeling into the, the, the films and creations. It's yeah. really cool. Okay, off camera you mentioned a story about a wishing well and something <laughs> that was an inspirational moment for you. Talk about that a little bit. Okay, so six years ago, it was my first time ever coming to Disney with my family. And I remember we were at Magic Kingdom and we were close to leaving, but we were walking behind the castle and I came across Cinderella's wishing well. So I don't know where this motivation came from. And I asked my mom, I was like, hey mom, could you give me like a quarter or a coin or something to toss in the wishing well? So she like gave me a little coin and I remember going up to it and I remember wishing that I could come back to Disney. And it's also why it resonates so much with Cinderella because she was so hopeful and she had dreams that she was able to pursue and make a reality, which is why I've grown so close to the character since being here. I feel like I've reached my dream in a sense. I'm here working for an amazing company and I get to be able to bring my family along with me on it. I get to experience all these wonderful memories, share them all across the internet with my friends and family. And so with all these things, these aspirations, what would be your dream Disney job and what would you want to do? I really want to animate a character. I want to be able to 
work on a scene with a bunch of people, be able to say that I got to work on this film and I got to um, put in a bit of my um, own little touch to it as well. Because I recall also watching um, the Frozen 2. Uh, I believe it was like behind the scenes of all the animators working on the Frozen 2 series. And honestly, that was like my biggest inspiration for wanting to pursue um, animation in the first part because I was like, this looks really cool. They are all working together on this one film and the way it just comes to life and the way that the story was told was just so beautiful and it, I learned to appreciate it a whole lot more. How do you feel your internship experience has helped you in these goals? Um, it gives me the opportunity to branch out. It allow me to talk to people in that field in the sense that I get to talk about the right steps for me to reach that goal that I want to, which is 3D animation. Like, where can I start from? I could do maybe an internship like a Disney internship as well. I'm also planning to do Disney Inspire, which is also offered here, which is great. So you're in an environment here where you are encouraged to truly and fully be yourself. Do you feel like you've done that while you're here? A hundred percent. I feel really welcomed and safe here at Flamingo Crossings Village. I feel like everybody is so open and very kind-hearted to where I have allowed myself to be exactly the person that I've always wanted to be and the person that I was so afraid to be um, back in New York. So it's definitely helped me so much with confidence, learning to love myself, and it's, it's been great. What's it like to work for a company that wants to see their employees, and in our case, cast members, succeed at every level? It's great because you feel supported, you feel loved, and you feel as though everybody um, who you work with is cheering you on. They just want to see you grow. They want to see you succeed in life. And they hope to see you achieve your career and goals that you have planned for yourself. Do you have any trainers, leaders, anyone in your area that um, has just been an inspiration to you or helpful? Um, my proprietor at work has been super sweet with me. Whenever I did have like a little bit of an issue or problem, she would resolve it for me. And she's also the reason why I'm happier as well. She's helped me out so much, which I really appreciate. So looking back a few months ago, you were at home and you're trying to figure out if this was right for you, if you were going to do it. You did it. You're here. Do you stand firm in that decision and are you proud of it? I'm proud of it. I don't want to look back and I don't want to go back to that person who was so shy and like really scared to talk to somebody, to socialize, to go out. And I feel like here I've been able to just spread my wings and just authentically be myself and in a sense be a bit like carefree, just letting um, my true colors shine. Ed, when someone is listening to you speak and they're feeling it, they're excited about the potential of this internship experience, they're just not there yet, what's the one thing that you could say to them that would bring them on in? Um, you should definitely do this program to make some amazing friends, and create wonderful memories with people who are going to support you, who are going to love you very much, and overall, you're going to be in an environment where you feel so welcomed and so loved by everybody you interact with. So I would say go for it. Edwin, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story with us here today. We hope your college program experience continues to be so rewarding, and I know for a fact that we're gonna see you as a Disney animator one day. Thanks so much. Thank you, I really appreciate it. <laughs> and now we're passing things over to Holly, who was talking to another intern who is shining through her Disney college program. Thanks, Josiah. Okay, so sitting next to me is an absolute gem. I'm so excited to have her on the show. Diamond, welcome to the podcast. Hi. How are you feeling? How are the vibes? I'm feeling great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay, so let's start with a little grounding. You work in merchandise at Disney Springs. Tell me about that. So I actually work in a zone. So I work in five different stores. I work at Goofy's Candy Co., Disney's Days of Christmas, Wonderful World of Memories, Art of Disney, and the Star Wars Trading Post. A lot. It is. <laughs> Do you have a favorite, or is that like asking a parent if they have a favorite child? I absolutely have a favorite. I have two. They're tied. So my first favorite is Goofy's Candy Co. Because most of the time, CPs work there, so mm -hmm. it's like I'm working with my besties. And two, I like Disney Days of Christmas because the costume is cute, and there's more guest interaction. Okay, so what makes Goofy's Candy Co. your favorite? 
there's actually a lot to do in Goofy's Candy Co. because we don't just um, serve what's in our case line. So in our case line, we have apples, crispy treats, cookies, fudge. But in our college program, we get to make cotton candy. We get to make candy apples and we get to do a create your own treat where people are able to customize their own treat. So did you have to learn how to do all of that coming into this? Yeah, during my training, it was like two weeks of training. Okay, so I have to ask because the like candy and like the candy apples I'm thinking specifically are so perfect. Like the chocolate and the caramel on them mm -hmm. is always like flawless. How do you do that? Is that a secret? Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just time. You know, okay. the first time you try anything is not going to be the best, but after the 17th time, <laughs> Perfect. So backing it up a little bit, how did you first hear about the Disney College program? Well, I have a few childhood best friends who actually did the college program, and but I didn't really do any research about it before I applied. I just, um, I graduated in December, so I didn't really have any set plans before I went to go into my master's program. And so I saw my friends living their best life at Disney. So I'm like, all right, give her a try. And I applied and here we are. So did you have any expectations going into this before you did any research? Well, I didn't know that it would be as much work <laughs> and less play because all I saw really was my friends at the parks. You know, I didn't really see the going to work part. But now that I know what it is, I'm glad that the work part is actually fun. And going to the parks, of course, it makes it worthwhile. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit more because I feel like that is maybe not a common misconception, but I think definitely a very real part of the Disney College program is like, you are here to work. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit more about that part. So typically in my position, I get about 30 to 40 hours a week, so I'm working constantly. But the fortunate thing is, um, since Disney Springs is open pretty late, I don't start work until about five o'clock. So that gives me the whole beginning of my day to do adult things like, Grocery shopping, dishes, laundry, oh, those all things. All the fun things, yeah. the best the parts things. of life. <laughs> and then I go to work. And then um, most of the time we get about five days or six days. So I get two days off or a day off to explore the parks or explore Disney or even just explore Orlando. Mm -hmm. So if you start work at five, what time are you getting off usually? Eleven, twelve. Okay. 30. Okay. Okay. So I feel like I need you to walk me through a day in your life because you start work at five, you're getting off at like 11. When do you sleep? When do you find time to like do fun things and relax? A day in a life. Okay. So if I got off the night before at 12, mm -hmm. I would probably sleep to about nine, 10 o'clock. Okay. That's a solid nine hours. That's exactly. Really good. Exactly. <laughs> and so now I'll wake up and, but the night before I probably plan out what I want to do. So if there's something I'm really craving, like food-wise, I'll maybe go to a park and get that, or maybe go to a resort and get that. But I'll wake up, figure out what time I have to go to work, and figure out what time I have to ride the bus, mm -hmm. which is typically an hour and a half before. Mm -hmm. So I'll wake up, I'll do the dishes, I'll make breakfast, and then I'll do whatever I want to do, go to a resort, or even just lay in bed. And then I'll ride the bus and get ready for work. Well, get ready for work, then ride the bus, then head to work. And the bus takes you from here, from Lingo Crossings Village, to Disney Springs, right? Yes. Do you take the bus anywhere else? Um, the resorts okay. and the parks. And then the bus also takes us to the grocery store. So mm -hmm. I go there as well. Okay, perfect. So basically you have transportation yeah. when you need it, is what Everywhere. I'm hearing. Now that you're here and, you know, you said you didn't do a ton of research before coming into it. How have your expectations shifted? What's been like a surprise and delight since coming here? What's new? What's, what have you learned? Well, when I first got here, before I got here, I thought it was going to be, you know, fun. And it is fun. However, I'm still adulting. So I'm finding out a lot about myself more than I thought I would because I'm six, six seven hours away from everything I've ever known. So I'm really having to learn about my values and what I actually truly value, what I like opposed to what my family and friends like and the things that I actually have time for. So I feel like I'm grateful because I learned myself I'm experiencing peace like I've never experienced before. Oh my gosh. Okay, tell me more about this peace part because that all sounds stressful. Like living far away from home sounds stressful. So tell me more about peace and how you found that. <laughs> well, because I find out what works for me, you know, so I, I wake up and I get to do what Diamond wants to do, mm -hmm. opposed to what Diamond has to do. Well, I do have to go to work. That's why I'm here. <laughs> but before that, I'm able to do something that actually makes me happy. Like I can wake up any day 
and say, I want to ride this one ride and I can go do that. Mm -hmm. Or I just want to sit in this one park or I just want to sit by the pool and I can, I have that power to just take that and do that. Yeah. So okay. That's that peace. Sense. Unlike in like in college, you have that as well. But like college is more like schoolwork. You're here to do yeah. school. And here you are here to work, but we're here to make magic. So like, I don't think we really notice that we have to make magic for ourselves too. Oh, I love that. How do you make magic for yourself? A good question. <laughs> um, I guess, like I said, I just do things that Diamond wants to do or that my inner child never got to do. Oh, okay. So what does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, personally, I am on a hunt to meet every princess <gasps> and take a picture. So because like when you're a little girl, you feel like an absolute princess. And apparently when you get older, you have to stop feeling like a princess, but that's not true, you know? So I go meet all the princesses and I take pictures with them and I have um, a collage of the pictures with my princesses or the princesses. And then it's on a tote bag that I made at Uniglow in Disney Springs. And I'm gonna go meet them again and they can sign the picture. Perfect. I'm Perfect. sorry, but that is the <laughs> cutest idea I have ever heard. Does this need to be an official challenge? <laughs> I think maybe yes. I think you're onto something here. And then do you ever do anything outside of the Disney bubble? Absolutely. What do you like to do? So me and my friends, we like to eat. But we also go to the beach Ooh. a lot and shopping. Okay. Which beach do you go to? Coco. Coco's a good beach. How do you get there? Do you have, you don't have a car, right? I do not. But okay. our friends do. So. Uh, <laughs> That's the key. If you don't have a car, find somewhere who does. Yes. If you want to go to the beach, that is. Yeah. Go outside the Disney bubble. Okay. And then what does a day at the beach look like for you if you're planning like the perfect beach day? Hmm. Well, we'll go and get fruits, vegetables, anything you might need for a beach day. We'll have beach towel, water. And then we'll... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We can't gloss over the water part. This is Florida. In Florida, you need to stay hydrated, hydrated. Absolutely. Like however hydrated you think you need to be, Double Multiply it. that by 10. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Double it and give it to the next person. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And so we'll go and we'll find a nice spot and then we'll chill there. Personally, I don't like to get in that much because of the salt water, but you know, stick your feet in, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll lay I'm at the beach, take a nap, listen to a podcast, mm -hmm. listen to some music, watch a TV show. Listen to the Life at Disney podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And yeah, and then we'll probably go out to eat after we're all sandy from the beach <laughs> and then we'll head home. But I feel like this is really touching on something that I don't maybe you knew this before you moved here. I did not that Florida has so many hidden gems outside of Disney. Did you know that coming into this? Well, see, I'm a TikTok girly. Ah. So I, before I got here, when I got accepted, I did my research about what's in the area. And there's a lot. Okay, and then I wanna go back to your major. So what school did you go to and then what did you study? I went to Coastal Carolina University where I received my BA in music. I have to admit, I don't know a lot about like a music degree. So what do you study when you're studying music? Well, it's a concentration like in education. Okay. So I was essentially studying to be a music educator. And do you still wanna do that? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, okay, why? Tell me about that. Well, um, I have an older sister, and she was like the first person to really introduce me to music. And music was the only thing that I was initially very good at. Like I'm not <clears throat> very good at social studies or science, but I just happened to be very musically inclined at an early age because of my sister. And so it was the first thing that clicked for me. And that's the first place where I found a home. And so I would like to help create a home for other students as well. That's awesome. Do you know what age you'd want to teach? Yes, either elementary school music or a middle school band. Oh my gosh. Well, I think you'd be great at it. I can already tell from your vibe that you would be very good at Thank that. Thank you. So how would you say this internship has helped you in pursuing that goal? I think that something that um, a lot of people underestimate about um, teaching is the parents. And a lot of Disney is you're interacting with parents and their children. So I'm just finding a way to... Uh, talk to them and get them to understand things because guests ask a lot of questions about mm -hmm. the merchandise that we have at all these stores so just talking to them in a way that they understand but also their child because most of the time they're buying things for their child like their child wants this candy you know or their child wants this doll or mm -hmm. this painting so just trying a way to talk to the both of them for both of them to understand has there been like a learning curve in interacting with guests would you say yes absolutely because one thing that I didn't know or really understand was that 
Disney brings people from all over, not just America. So a lot of guests will come and they won't speak English. So you will have to find a way to get what they need by another way or like by hand motions or like about a little bit of their language that you know or a little bit of your language that they know. Mm -hmm. And then do you feel like you're close, like closest to the people you work with or roommates? Like how do you make friends on the program? I'm closest with the people I work with because we work together in all the different stores. So we get to um, we'll go to this store and work together and then the next day we're at the next store working together. So we get to really bond. And plus we're most of the time walking to the bus together and at the mm -hmm. bus stop together. So we really get to learn each other mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Do you guys ever hang out outside of work? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. What do you guys like to do? Eat. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat. <laughs> eat. And go to the parks or resorts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you were planning like a day off and I was like, hey guys, can I join you? What would that day off look like? Okay, it depends on what I want to eat. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Everything but, is driven by my stomach. Yes. <laughs> so um, if we can get a reservation for one of the dining reservations like um, Crystal's Palace or Ohana or Boma, we'd go there. And then from there, we'd pick a park that we want to go to or like a specific ride that we haven't rode yet on our program. And then we'd go to the park. Oh my gosh, so you're just like going down the bucket list then yeah. and checking everything yeah. off. I definitely have a list of everything okay. I want to do. Okay, so I am very curious about your friend group. How did you guys all meet? Well, we met at work. Okay. And all of us, what we have in common is that we all had no idea what we were going to do post-graduation. <laughs> and so we all kind of found ourselves here, which is great because we're all like trying to apply for jobs and really getting into the adult world. So it really feels good to have people in my corner and to feel like I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. So you are working long hours. How do you recharge after a long day of work? I'll come home, shower, do nice little self-care, and then I'll watch TV or make a dinner I've been really craving and, or some sweets. Always. I always need something sweet after mm -hmm. I eat. A sweet and, treat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll do that and just rest. Do you cook a lot? Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to be like, I have so much respect for you. No, I'm more of a TV dinner kind of girl. Yes. Or I'm more of convenience. Yes. I know we've talked about microwaving dinner, which I think is a very legit option for when you need to eat. What are some other adulting things that you've had to learn to do on your program? Um, vitamins. <laughs> I didn't Ooh. really know that we have to take them. We should take them. But we don't have to. And then um, in my daily protein, like getting protein, eating your vegetables, those are things that continues to make you healthy. And then like, you know, going to the gym. And then how did you start learning all of this? Well, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good resource. Just giving me ideas. And then when I go to the grocery store, I would just kind of, you know, see what's in the budget and figure out, you know, what I don't have and what I do have. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you bring up a really good point with budgeting because when you are on the program, you're an intern, so you're not exactly making like millions and millions of dollars. So budgeting is important. It's important to understand money and kind of get that part of adulting down. Tell me more about that. Well, I feel like I'm still financially irresponsible. Me However, <laughs> my mother is not and she's a huge couponer. So I really lean on her about um, what I can't afford and what I what things I should and should I need at the moment. So I just kind of plan it out by the things that I want versus need. And then like whenever whatever I have in my cart, I'll kind of be like, OK, Diamond, you don't need this today. Mm -hmm. It'll still be here next week. Come back. Mm -hmm. OK, that is a really good way to think about it. You don't need it today, but it's not going anywhere. You can still come back and get it. <laughs> and then how would you say the transition between kind of living at home or being in a more structured environment like college has been coming to now living completely on your own away from home. What was that transition like? I think the difference is when I was at home, I had someone to lean on. So my mom would be like, all right, Diamond, your room is dirty. Let's clean it. And I would moan and groan, but she's not here to yell at me. I have to yell at myself. And I know that there's a pile of clothes on the floor, so you should fold them and put them up. And I'm the only one in the way of stopping me from doing that. Okay, so it sounds like you're gaining a lot of life skills on this program then. What do you feel like has been maybe the biggest benefit to you from being on the Disney College program and having this internship? Oh, I found myself and I realized a lot about myself. I realized that I'm extremely sensitive and there are a lot of like interactions I'll have with like my cast members and guests and I'll have to think to myself like, 
did they react that way because of something I did? But in reality, it has everything to do with everything surrounding them. Like maybe their kid is yelling, it's raining outside, it's super hot, they're not mad at you, you have done nothing wrong. How did you come to that realization? Because that's super introspective. Well, I just kept getting upset. Like when I wasn't um, making everyone's day, I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Like, what am I doing? And I would go home and decompress and I had to think like, you know, you've, you've done your job. You did the work that you needed to do. You have no idea what that person is going through. How do you bounce back from that though? Because I feel you on that. Like I also have a tendency to take things really personally. How do you bounce back from that? Well, a little cry, never hurt nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so a so cry, true. and then I'll talk to other people who have a lot of wisdom. So like mm -hmm. your coordinator, if you're feeling a kind of way about an interaction that you had, you know, just go to them. Or I'm sure there are a lot of cast members who've been like at your position who have been there for a lot of years. So this is a situation that's happened to them. So just, you know, talk to them about how they got through it. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have a moment where you were able to make magic for a guest where you're like, oh, okay, this is what it's all about? Yes, actually. Um, at Goofy's Candy Co., we have pastel cookies that are blue and pink. And a guest came up to me and was like, can I ask you a really weird question? And I'm like, okay. And he wanted me to press his phone, and on the phone would be the gender of his baby. <gasps> <laughs> and so I pressed it, uh, changed my gloves, got the cookie. It was a boy. And I wrapped it up nice and neat for them. And I watched them find out the gender of their baby by the cookie. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is so special. That is super cute. That is so cool. And then were your coworkers part of that, too? Or you were like, this is my special moment? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they were there. And they were like, what's the gender? What's the gender? <laughs> and we got to watch them, you know, figure out the gender of their baby. That is so cool. I feel like that's something you don't anticipate like coming into the this internship is like you don't anticipate having moments like that. Like that's not going to be in a job description. Definitely. Yeah. That's just uniquely Disney. It's super special. <laughs> you live here at Flamingo Crossings Village, which is this gorgeous community. Have you taken advantage of the amenities here? Yes. I go to the pool, the gym, and Flamingo Crossings also host events like pool bash and like there's a hot dog day, there's an ice cream social and things like that. Okay, so I was not on the invite list for any of these events because I am not a program participant. So I'm wondering if you can take me behind the scenes. What happens at like the pool bash? Like what does an event look like? So there's photo ops, there's DJs, and we all just kind of hang by the pool and get to know each other while listening to music and just talking. So you've talked about wanting to be more independent, figuring out what you're doing with your life now that you're outside of school. And really, you could have done anything, but you came here. How do you feel like this has helped with that? I feel like Disney is helping um, me heal my inner child, an adult, but at a slower pace. Mm -hmm. Because if I were to just enter the corporate world, I'd just be working and I'd still be doing the same things, but I also wouldn't be surrounded by people who are doing the same thing as me. So in the corporate world, there'll probably be um, other people work with me who have done this job for two, three years. But everyone here on my college program, well, not everyone, but some people here are like, just finishing college or still in college or around the same age. So we all have, all have the same common goal. So I have people surrounding me that are trying to have the same outcome and same goals. Talk to me about like the slower pace because I feel like that is a big part of it. Cause like, okay, the day to day, I feel like you know, is not slow paced at all. It's pretty fast paced, but you feel like overall it's been like a smoother transition. Tell me about that. Well, it's really, work and play so it's like the fact that i could go to a park before i go to work mm -hmm. i don't know any other job <laughs> that i can do that and that's enjoyable so it's like i go to the park and i get to ride my favorite ride or get to be with my favorite people or see my favorite characters and that gets me in a great mood to help make magic for other people what advice do you have for somebody who is thinking about doing this internship my advice to someone thinking about doing this internship is to just do it. Um, you never know um, how many doors this is open for you or what you can find out about yourself, or about the qualities that you bring to others. So just do it, give it a try. Okay, well Diamond, thank you so much for chatting with me. Our time is already over and I'm already sad about it. <laughs> but it was so good to have you here and I'm wishing you the best of luck on the rest of your internship and forever and ever for the rest of your life. Thank We're you. cheering for you. 
that is all we have for today. But in our next episode, we are going to be talking to some incredible alumni. I cannot wait. I will see you then.